There are no tired rhymes. There are no forbidden rhymes. Lines are not predictable unless lines are. Death and breath, womb and tomb, love and of, moon, June, spoon, all still have great poems ahead of them. Rhymes may be so far apart you cannot hear them, but they can hear each other as if whispering on a toy telephone made of two paper cups and a length of string. Rhymes do not need to be hidden or disguised. They are nothing to be ashamed of. Rhymes are not good Victorian children to be seen but not heard. Rhymes may be feminine or masculine, but not neuter. Some rhymes are diatonic, some are modal. Off rhymes founded on consonants are more literary than off rhymes founded on vowels, assonance. Vowels are shifty. Assonance is in the mouth, not the ear. It is performative. Consonants bring forth what is different, so we listen for what is the same. read earlier the historical works. My name has often been Charles Bernstein. I will read the first piece. These pieces that we are going to be reading are all available free in Poetry Magazine and available at the table in the back. For those of you who read the complete magazine, you will get a $10 refund and thanks for reading the poetry. My piece is called Manifest Aversions, Conceptual Conundrums, and Implausibly Deniable Links. I should note in terms of this in Poetry Magazine that for many of us, the manifesto, especially as represented in Marianne Pause's wonderful anthology, Manifesto, A Century of Isms, is itself a literary art form. And what makes it a remarkably resilient one that it is still despised by those who claim to be poetry lovers and literary people who claim that we don't need any manifestos anymore because poetry should have no ideas. Poetry should not be about thought. Poetry should have no positions. And yet, somehow it does. I love originality so much, I keep copying it. I love originality so much, I keep copying it. Immature poets borrow. Mature poets invest. Poetry wants to be free, or if not available for a long-term loan. I'm the derivative product of an originality that spawns me as it spurns me. The work of art itself does not exist, only incommensurable social contexts through which it emerges and into which it vanishes. The author dies. The author's work is born. Poetry is a secret society hiding in plain sight, open to ear and mind's eye. 